Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our uh, guest session today with Lera Melin as our guest at the class on Responsible Business and Sustainable Development uh, in Higher School of Economics, Graduate School of Business. We have a virtual company tour today and I'm so happy that Nina Klebanova, a graduate uh, student and alumni of um, our business school, was so helpful in arranging two of her colleagues to come and join us today for our, for our session. And I would really like to welcome first the speaker of today, Christina Zaharchova. She will tell the story of sustainable development in Lera Merlin in Russia, and maybe a few words about yourself before you start. So the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Katerina. Yeah, my name is Christina. Uh, I'm working in uh, Lera Merlin, and I'm responsible for sustainability. Uh, the, one of the main parts, uh, I will talk about it during my presentation and we can discuss this. My position now is the Sustainability Project Manager uh, in the Rwanda Land, uh, and I would like to share with you uh, my, okay, let's say, career way. Uh, my, my career way to the position I have now. Uh, I, everything started for me in the high school when I decided that I'm really keen on geography, then I became the prize winner in uh, National Geographic Contest, Fiske uh, Olympiade, I think you know that, and that gave me the opportunity to enter MGIMO. Uh, we had a faculty of Applied Economics and Commerce where we have a department of ecology and sustainability. So uh, I studied there for four years and during this, uh, uh, education, I realized that I'm really keen on um, sustainability, but more in, uh, let's say, uh, energy sphere and finance. Uh, that's why um, after I graduated, I uh, my, after I finished my bachelor degree, I decided to go to um, to have master degree uh, in, also in Gimo, but uh, to where uh, I entered the program. Uh, where we had to study for three years uh, or for three days a week uh, and two days a week we had uh, an internship in Rosneft. Um, uh, <laughs> guys, please okay. turn off your microphone, Chanel, or Maxime, I don't know. Yes, our American student. Please. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, I had this master degree for two years and uh, Again, in parallel, I started to work in Leroy and Berlin because uh, immediately after my graduation, uh, after I graduated the bachelor degree, after I had the, received my bachelor degree, uh, I uh, had this offer for, for, from Leroy and Berlin that uh, started to develop uh, the sustainability in Russia. And so I had the really great opportunity to compare two systems of companies. So the state Russian company that is more like a ministry and the real international company really open uh, where all goals and values comes from inside, not from, you know, from external factors. Uh, and after these two years, I made my choice and I decided to stay in the Rwanda land, uh, developing different sustainability projects. And uh, um, I'm really grateful for this opportunity, actually. And you will see during my presentation what uh, can be different, um, different uh, projects, different directions. How you can be? How can you realize yourself in the company, like retail company, as the Rwandan is? Um, I started now to develop solar uh, projects and electrification projects uh, within the Rwandan. So, uh, in my case, uh, I managed to uh, realize both of my uh, favorite parts. So, it's sustainability, but also connected to uh, energy and. Uh, sustainable energy supply and electrification. So um, I'm a really lucky one. Um, and what I see now on the market is that um, there are more and more opportunities for uh, people, for young managers, uh, be a really uh, cool leaders in their spheres. 
but what is more important to understand how their sphere uh, impacts environment and society have a really deep knowledge in sustainability so you're really doing great uh, that you are going to be managers but you want to have this deep knowledge deep uh, background in sustainability because nowadays it's not just you know that you read a report or 17 goals of uh, the United Nations and you are like a cool manager you know everything about sustainability no it's not just PR it's not just media it's really um, a new business but always integrated in the sphere you're working in and we're gonna see it during my presentation I will try to show you how can this be realized at least in the in the retail company so let me start um sorry a few words few words about the company uh, um, and guys uh, some uh, uh, basic let's say uh, rules guidance how this lesson will be held and um, i'm really speaking fast and uh, emotionally so i don't normally look uh, on the video because uh, i'd like to see my screen not to forget to mention everything so if you have any questions during my presentation just feel free to turn on your microphone and ask me a question like absolutely no uh nothing wrong with it uh, on the contrary i will be really really glad so all the questions you have considering a concrete topic just try to uh pose the question during uh, the time we're discussing this topic everything you write uh, on the chat we're going to discuss uh, at the end of our lesson so this is like maybe more general questions or considering more uh, global things going on with the company, with Adeo, for example. Okay, this we can discuss later at the end of the lesson, but if you have really immediate question, just feel free to turn on your microphone and ask it. And we're gonna start from a little presentation of the company. I mean, uh, normally Leroy is a really a basic company that we have now in Russia. And most of people, whatever they are from Moscow or from big cities or not, they know this brand because it is a really accessible store where you can find anything you need for uh, your house uh, and for like making your living. So uh, Leroy Merlin is really one of the leaders in DIY sphere. Mm. It is uh, one of the companies, one of the brands that is incorporated in Adeo Group. So globally, we are Adeo that uh, uh, unites 13 brands. You can see it here in the middle. In Russia, uh, only Leroy Merlin is presented as, and the strategy of the company, the um, appearance of the company, the brand, how it is developed in Russia is like how you are uh, really, uh, key, not keen on, but how you're really used to see. Uh, the great, the main idea of this brand is to create the home of, uh, to, to uh, help people create the home of their dreams. And if we are talking about other brands that are incorporated in Adeo Group, uh, their mission is the same, but they more, uh, they are more focused on concrete spheres. In Russia, as I mentioned, we have uh, uh, only one brand from Adeo Group. It's Lera and Amanda but who knows how it's gonna develop in the future. Uh, here on the right, you can see some basic, uh, some basic uh, numbers uh, of Adeo Group as a, global, uh, as a global group. We are presented, Adeo is presented in 15 countries and takes the first place uh, in Europe in terms of sales. Uh, actually, it's really a French company, but uh, all over Europe, uh, everyone knows it as well as we do it in Russia because um, the geograph ge geography of uh, presence of uh, their group of Leroy Merlin, let's say more concretely, more precisely, uh, are markets where uh, there is the value of um, creating something by your hands. For example, we can take different markets like China, where we were presented, but eventually we found out that this is market is not really for us because in china you have this um uh, you have this uh, uh, tradition that uh, people always uh, hire a, a group of uh, workers uh, or a company to uh, make their living to make their houses to create something to design something they don't have this uh, tradition to do something by their hands and this is regarded as like you know uh, you don't have enough 
people do it only if they do not have enough means uh, to hire uh, professionals. In Russia, in the United States, in Europe, the, there is different position regarding this topic. It is considered really cool. It is considered that you are uh, smart if you are doing something by your hands. So uh, the geography uh, historically started in the Europe, in France, and then um, it is uh, now a worldwide group that is present also in Russia, in different countries, in Europe, as I mentioned, and also in Brazil. Um, we have uh, more than 120,000 of employees worldwide. So we are a really great community. And because this company is so huge and uh, usually occupies and takes the first place on the market it is present, it is present, presented in, we can make a really um, big and positive impact on, the, on this market in these countries. Uh, this slide presents and talks you, tells you more about Leroy Merlin uh, Russia or Leroy Merlin Vostok uh, as uh, it uh, combines Russian market and Kazakhstan market. Uh, and by, by, on the beginning of this year, in 2020, we had 107 stores. Uh, this includes offline stores that uh, you, you are used to, great stores, big malls uh, in cities where you can find everything, where you can touch what you're uh, willing to buy. Uh, offline store that we have both like marketplace and an offline store uh, in St. Petersburg. Uh, and also we have, um, five distribution centers, uh, which are two of them are in our uh, own, um, uh, our own, um, sorry guys, we own them, um, property, that, our, that is our own property and three, uh, the rest, we rent them. And if we are talking about two, uh, North Star and um, South uh, Gates uh, that are in our uh, property, we built them with green standards, so we can have more influence. Uh, we can more we have more control over them, so we really can uh, do much more positive uh, impact. And we're gonna discuss it, and we're gonna see, uh, and we can discuss. You can post questions also uh, regarding this during our presentation. So uh, Leroy Merlin is really offline company, as it presented in uh, many cities, in many cities in Russia, in many regions. And uh, the main um, value that is making it is in offline stores. However, we also try now to develop more uh, in online um, uh, technologies and on, uh, in online selling because uh, 2020, I think, showed it really concretely that uh, every company that is willing to stay uh, and, uh, and occupy the um, strong and have a strong position on the market need to have also uh, need to invest uh, also uh, quite a lot in online stores uh, as you can see here on the diagram we actually have a really big part on the russian market on a diy russian market we are we are considered as a leader on the Russian market in terms of uh, uh, household products and uh, um, services and year by year our share is increasing and we of course are really happy that is happening like this um so this is, was a brief about our company if you have any uh, questions considering the company as a whole as a business you can ask me now if not we're gonna uh, talk about this at the end of the lesson any uh, questions yeah. Can I yes. have a question? Um, sure. I understand it correctly that this is a family owned yeah. business. We're right. Exactly. Yeah. This is a family owned yeah. business. Yes. Yeah. Oops. Guys, please turn off the mic. Yeah. It's a family owned business. It's family milieu. Uh, the, inside the family, it's actually like a, a stakeholders, uh, shares, sorry, shareholders, but uh, uh, only family have this share. So, like, yeah, it's a in, really interesting structure and really, uh, let's say, Everything is done that the business keeps staying in, inside the family, uh, and it's quite. There were some there were uh, some cases when um, external um, buyers wanted to have share or buy the whole company, but it's pretty impossible because uh, the shares are so uh, shared between the members of the family that it's 
particularly uh, nearly impossible to do this. Yeah, but I mean, it's like uh, they are all shareholders, but family shareholders. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's so interesting that we have this ambition, we have these values, we have this strategy in sustainability, because actually we don't have so much external factors that push us, like really, like for example, if you're a public company, if you're going to IPO, you know that um, they have obligations to develop different projects, to make non-financial reports and that's why they need to do something to talk about it but we don't it's really coming from inside from the values of our employees from the values of our like shareholders but family shareholders so it's really really valuable that it's happening like this yeah i think it's important to know this distinction because if you can yeah. what is or snaps for instance that would yes, be a totally yes, different yes. story even though this is like a state public company um there is a Another thing that they are so big and they have so much power and influence, they can afford to, you know, not to talk too much about it and not to make too many active. They, they can afford to be not non -pro, not proactive in these questions, unfortunately. I mean, this is, I, I regarded this as a negative factor, but I mean, for this company and for the managers of uh, Rosneft, maybe this is like a bonus because they are more conservative uh, what, when it comes to, you know, like some green projects, not ecology as uh, industry ecology, but more about new businesses that, is, have more in, that have more impact, positive impact on environment and society. Uh, like even a couple of years ago, it happened that these huge companies like uh, industry companies, they only... Uh, they were only involved in charity and uh, controlling the ecology um, in indicators while producing something. It's just started like a couple of years ago, then they started to, you know, invest and in starting to create new businesses and thinking how they are looking strategically, you know. So if here in the Rhyme land, this is the opposite. This is really comes from the the spirit of the time, the changes that um, our employees actually uh, really value how the company is treating not only them, but all the others. It is uh, incorporated uh, actually in our strategy, as you can see here. Uh, we are going to, uh, we are trying to create a platform that um, uh, helps uh, to be better uh, like our asset self, like employees, that helps to create something good for uh, our counterparts, our stakeholders, for example, our clients or our um, partners, and the glow uh, and the world and society as general. So we are really willing to uh, by promoting our business by developing we're really willing to create a positive uh, value additive value to every uh, everybody that surrounds us and this is like the mission of the company and here you can see that it's like really a uh, big statements that we uh, have that we always keep in mind while planning something while creating something new it ha it has to have not only this economic value like that you can uh, see clearly through like budget or um, like financial statements but it should also have this positive uh, environmental and social impact um, here you can see the main uh, goals the main uh, sustainable goals 9 of 17 on which we have as we uh, believe the direct impact uh, we did this research, research while we were planning uh, and developing our sustainability strategy and it uh, uh, was confirmed while we were uh, interrogating our uh, stakeholders um, while making our non-financial reports again uh, when we are, when we are doing our non-financial report well non-financial statement report uh, it's not an obligation it's really our willing because it also helps the company to you know um organize uh, the processes organize how everything is working towards this sustainable strategy so let's me briefly discuss with you these uh, nine uh, main um, sustainable goals uh, one of 
the, fo the fourth goal that uh, is the first it's quality education how can we how, what do you think how we as a company can impact this if we have direct impact on this what do you think guys anyone volunteers <laughs> we have studied sdgs your angel stories are sdgs maybe someone who has written on this sdg can you comment no Just one unmute yourselves don't be shy okay uh, so I will, maybe it's uh, not that clear because of course, this is not our um, general uh, work to do. We are not uh, a school university, that's clear. But we as a huge company, as we already uh, saw present in many countries in many, okay, let's see if we're talking about the Rhine, Merlin, Vostoka in many cities and regions of Russia and uh, Kazakhstan, we can develop programs that actually arise awareness of uh, people not necessarily our clients because for example we have a program that is uh, uh, dedicated to um, schools the, to pupils uh, to raise their awareness towards uh, the, the really the, the real importance of conservation of wood for example because our company we trade products and a huge part of these products contain wood and you know that there are different ways of how this wood can be produced for example, in Russia and in, in Finland, the uh, final product can be the same. But if you're looking at the price of finished product, it is much higher than it is uh, made in Russia. And the problem is not just because the salaries in Finland are higher, but because also the standards of producing wood are much higher and they are observed much more strictly than in Russia. So our obligation here is to uh, array raise awareness of buyers uh, to look uh, on the uh, incorporation of these products they're actually buying to understand what is green and what is not and what when they are um, when you are paying when you are like buying something you should understand that it's not only about to satisfy your need but it's also that you are kind of sponsoring uh, some activity and how it is done so our um, real um, mission here as a quality education goal to promote awareness among people among russians among kazakhstan people uh, to understand um, how can they make more sustainable choices and how their everyday actions actually impact um, the sphere of uh, greening economy so this this was actually the answer about gender equality, guys, what do you think? I mean, it's easier. What do you think? How can we as a company uh, make a positive impact on this goal? Maybe I can. Sure, I sure. That, uh, uh, it's done by uh, having uh, diversity in your companies, in, in your uh, stores and so on. So this is uh, actually always done in the companies uh, by that way and i suppose that you've done the same absolutely yeah uh, sorry somebody else can i add sure uh, maybe you have some gender balance uh, ratio from no, to hire uh, your okay people. very good okay thank you something else we have some comments in the chat like in recruitment process that's what i uh, can read and okay. some people agree with already what has been said. Any okay. Eternal analytics are in the, <laughs> in the chat. Yes, because we have people who uh, have special, uh, they're majoring in HR management. So that's okay. the audience okay. we have here. Strategic management, I forgot to tell you this, and this is important. Project management and human resources management. So three. Okay, perfect. But it's better, guys. I mean, we will look for a chat. I, I, I understand now that it's, for some it's more convenient to write, but if you have the possibility, please just answer it for me. It's really, um, I really like to teach and I prefer to teach if offline when I, you can hear the voices, the you, know, you see your eyes and uh, like to feel the atmosphere. So if you have the possibility to answer loudly, like uh, answer out not by writing, it will be absolutely great but thank you for answering in any case yeah you're absolutely right there are different um, blocks how we can um, control and promote gender equality it's true uh, that is uh, firstly going through um, 
recruit, recruitment process and that's true also that we have this ratio uh, that we actually uh, control every time but it happened to uh, appear I think this year only, because uh, uh, normally uh, we didn't have this ratio. So we were going to, uh, we're developing different programs. So we have the same salaries like for women and men bosses and managers and specialists. We don't, uh, we look on the competence and not on the gender. That was like uh, always, but now to make it more, you know, like um, not strict, but making more, um, I don't know how even better to say it, to uh, present it more clearly to the our stakeholders. We have this coefficient now, that's true. But we have uh, kind of lots of uh, women, women working in stores in the central office. Um, and in the company, there was always, you know, this uh, social um, equality. And this is, again, uh, one of our main values. What about clean water and sanity? Ah, and uh, one more question that I wanted to add to your answer is that it's not always, it's not only about uh, Le Rhin Merlin stock itself, it's also about our suppliers because we are as a retail group, uh, we can influence and we have, we are in work with a lot of partners, with a lot of suppliers. And now we're making a really great kind of tough, but really great program in working in developing our suppliers also. Because, you know, we are kind of a hub because we don't produce anything. We have our own brands, but again, it's not uh, in our property like factories or plants. Uh, we are a real hub, we are a retail group, and we have this uh, unique possibility as a retail company to. Um, impact both clients in this direction and suppliers. And we are really trying to use this opportunity maximum. And now we are making social audits of our suppliers and there will be one of the cases, like a particular case we are gonna discuss in the end of the presentation. And here again, here we can impact also the gender equality and social uh, equality social requirements uh, also for our suppliers talking about the third goal that is presented here clean water and sanitation what do you think where exactly can we influence have a positive impact according to this goal it's quite simple guys any ideas think about <laughs> oh, the question i'm sorry because i don't understand uh, how we as a company, I mean, in which, our, um, in which operations uh, in our company do you think we can make this positive impact uh, uh, on, uh, uh, within this goal to, like, to make uh, water cleaner and sanitation on a um, well health level? Yes, uh, I think in production, of course. We're not producing company. Okay. <laughs> But as I said, we are offline company. When do you think so? In the stores, right? Like uh, our stores don't consume that much um, water, but uh, we are really uh, going strict on these topics. Uh, we control everything and we report um, like as we use, as we have to do uh, everything that is concerned um, wastes and our water that we are used and then we're disposed and now we are also thinking in direction of uh, if we can um, uh, not save but if we can um oh my god i forgot the word if we can um collect um, if we can collect uh, rainwater on in our stores uh, to uh, minimize the consumption of the new water so i mean the consumption of water as we are not a production plant is you know minimum according to other market metrics but still we are uh, doing everything possible to make it even uh, less and without any any negative impact uh, on um, the environment yeah so affordable and clean energy what do you think here what this may be the same uh responsible it's the same. Energy. again yes it stores but what do you think what can we do here uh you can try uh to minimize use of energy to use special valves sure. and mm -hmm. etc okay and 
there is two uh, two main processes actually here. I mean, it's, it comes for every company. But when you're talking about affordable and clean energy, when you are uh, a business, what can you do? And you gave already a hint at the beginning of, uh, of yeah. your talk. Yeah. Yeah. What, what you, you're I mean, doing in the company. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. Hintedly, you have the answer already. We can double check. This is really important. It's not only about Lura and Merlin stock, it's about any business. What can you do to make a real positive impact according to energy? Because sometimes nowadays it's um, the priorities are not on the right place, actually. What can you do first? That was the correct answer. You can minimize uh, your consumption. You're doing everything to uh, reduce the consumption. Um, so it's called energy efficiency and uh, minimize the consumption. That's true. The second step that you do, if, when you cannot minimize, you cannot minimize any, everything. I mean, you have the economic activity, you still have to produce, uh, consume energy. What can you do? Maybe you can consume energy from uh, renewable sources. True, yeah. But do you know, guys, what we really consider renewables and what is the difference? Like, do you consider them as a as a like you know the final solution? Okay, we install wind turbines, we install solar panels, and we're okay. Do you think it's true? Do you think that's really the resolution to all the problems that the society have with regarding, I mean, energy sphere? Please discuss any, it with any me. Any specialists on energy here? I, I mean, it's should. not, it's not a, a sorry, uh, Alexander, it's not a specialist, but how you feel it? How you feel it? Just. Maybe I think you should use energy saving materials in your. Uh... Um, no, that, that's true, uh, Alexander. Yeah, that's true. We already discussed that you need to apply technologies that uh, um, allow you to uh, minimi uh, minimize the consumption. That's true. I'm talking about how to make it greener, how to make this uh, consumption greener, which technologies you have. And do you think that by installing these technologies, you solve the whole problem as it is? Amy. Okay, guys, <laughs> I don't know why you're so shy or maybe I, my question is not that concrete, but I will try to explain you. The main thing here, and it comes also for Laurent Merlin, but it comes also for other companies, is that um, first step, again, as we mentioned, is to trying to uh, consume as less as possible. And that's how we are doing uh, in our Laurent Merlin. Since 2020, we started a really big program by renovating our stores because the first store in Russia was built in 2006. So it's already more than like 15 years that it, this building um, is an operation. And of course, technologies are now much more modern and we are trying to modernize the equipment that is installed in our stores. This is the first and general step. It's absolutely not ob obligatory to do this. But when it comes to making it greener, and when it comes more to, you know, um, our actions uh, to protect, to uh, make a positive uh, impact, uh, to preserve the temperature, the rise of the temperatures, like our climate goals, let's call them like this, it comes to green energy. And we um, have this uh, possibility to make a positive impact on developing the renewables. Because in Russia now, uh, maybe some of you know, maybe not, we have um, a state program that supports the development of renewables, but it's not enough to make a, a real market. Uh, and we as a retail company, as a big company uh, presented in Russia, we and like 20, 30 of others, the companies, um, international mostly companies, we have this possibility to make a corporate, um, uh, corporate uh, willing to promote these renewables. And now we uh, are planning to develop solar panels on the south uh, store, on our south stores. We are planning to uh, consume green electricity from big plants that are already installed. But we should always keep in mind that uh, by investing in this sphere is not, you know, that we are solving all the problems. We as a consumers, uh, the big consumers, we should always keep in mind and uh, keep up with the market, with the new technologies that also 
minimize and minimize the negative impact because both even wind turbines and solar panels, even though uh, they solve kind of problems, if we're talking about pollution in cities and a burning of um, hydrocarbons, they solve these problems, but to produce uh, this uh, technology this uh, equipment of solar panels and wind turbines there are still uh, different um, ingredients different resources that are needed and they are extracted from the earth again with a kind of pollution away so uh, the, my topic that I wanted to uh, say that um, as everywhere but also regarding affordable and clean energy we uh, as a company tries not to you know to solve a small concrete problem like we put a goal that we want to consume 100% of green energy by 2025 uh, and that's it and we're trying and we just buy certificates for example on the market and that's it we're trying to make a really positive impact uh, on the whole sphere by investing in the real new capacities this is uh, uh, a really important thing. And I think this is one of the topics that really distinguish us from and our approach from other companies. Uh, decent work and economic growth. I mean, you remember that we have so many thousands of uh, uh, employees worldwide. And of course, uh, the minimum we can do is to provide them with a decent salary and guarantee social guarantees. And actually, Roy Merlin was stock and I mean, all the brands that are incorporated in Adeo Group, they're kind of famous for their social, um, social um, benefits that are given to employees. And it's really uh, valuable that the company is doing this. Sustainable cities and communities. Guys, any answers? How we as a company can influence this? Uh, think of Moscow, how many Lira Marlands are there and what kind yeah. of work they're doing already. What is our, I mean, what is incorporated in our strategy? What we are actually, what is the core of our business? goods for building homes actually yeah and so by promoting the goods that are produced sustainably that are produced on the plants uh, that uh, respect uh, social um, requirements that respect uh, that producing the products with uh, uh, require environmental requirements we can promote goods that can create that on the basis of which you can create more sustainable home by yourself so yeah, this is the, one of the main of our goals. One of the main goals where we can make the positive impact is to promote these products uh, on the basis of which, with the help of which um, professionals and final clients can build and can make their home in a more sustainable way. Responsible consumption and production. This is an interesting thing because as you remember, we're not a producing company. company. How here we can impact? It's already been discussed, but I wanted to hear from you, guys. Be more active, guys. It's this is so... yeah. I know. <laughs> Be more active. I mean, here responsible consumption and production. Uh, we have a really great uh, impact on our suppliers. As I said, we already discussed it a bit because we, as a hub, we have influence on our clients, we have impacts on our suppliers and of course partners, NGOs and government. But I mean, there are two main directions, suppliers and um, our clients. And here, of course, we can um, make requirements and make them more stricter and stricter year by year uh, from which ingredients, from the, which sources the products, the final products that we sell, shall be produced or make even bands. Uh, for example, if the product is uh, produced with help or contains uh, this substance, we will not uh, sell it. It's, we have this possibility, we have this power, and we use it to make a positive impact uh, to promote um, goods that are produced from uh, recyclable or sustainable uh, sources. Life on land. Okay, I will do it again by myself. As you know, we are an offline uh, group. I mean, we have offline stores, really big ones. And of course, to build them, a big territory uh, um, taken. Uh, sometimes uh, we need, and not sometimes, but we usually uh, do different activities to um, compensate 
for extraction of this lands by the construction of our stores. Uh, so uh, we are planting trees, we are working on the sustainability and it's not only that, okay, we are making a store somewhere in Moscow and building, um, planting trees somewhere in Siberia. It's not only like this, I mean, it exists also because we are, have these programs on the territories that were um, destroyed by fires or natural disasters also, but we also try to uh, make uh, an some greening on the territories of our own proper stores and on the territories that are located in the same perimeter or close geographically to our stores. And the last goal that uh, as we think we have a um, direct impact is the partnerships for the goals. Uh, it is true because as I said, as a retailer, we have different projects. We are incorporated in logistics. We are incorporated in the stores, in the buildings. We are incorporated in with suppliers, with um, producing uh, the products. We are incorporated with teaching and raising awareness of our clients and societies in general. So we have really, uh, different perspectives uh, and possibilities to make this partnership and promoting these goals that we discussed and also other goals and we are trying and doing as much as we can so this was the un goals the general the like i don't know the uh, main goals that every country every uh, company tries to implement in and follow in their activities we as a company um, have our own proper values. And this is really important, as I already mentioned, Leran Verlaine Vostok is really a social company. Uh, France is a social country and uh, Leran Verlaine inherits these values. And again, we're really a social uh, company. And by, two th no, um, till 2018, we had different uh, values. They were talking about more about um, the well-being of our employees. We were thinking more about clients, and nothing was said about the environment. And um, year by year, we started to have more questions from our own employees, from the clients, from our suppliers uh, uh, about ecological issues, about environmental issues. And we decided that it's time to, you know, reconsider maybe our values. And what is really important about what you see here on the slide is that these values uh, were produced uh, by the opinion, basic, based on the opinion uh, of our own employees. So everyone had the opportunity to express themselves and to choose the values that is he or she considered the most important. And you can see here that uh, um, there is uh, something for our customers is being together as a whole society making work-life balance it concerns more our employees taking care is about the environmental issues and changing this purpose it's about our strategic and economic development and here i have a question that i'm definitely sure you can answer and i wanted and i would like to hear a couple of uh, some of you not just one answer for you is it important to that the company where you will work at, uh, work for, uh, that this company has these values, like not the concrete you see on the slide, but that has values uh, and social and environmental responsibility. Or for you, it's more important that um, for you, the biggest salary possible is the, the only criteria you choose the, your workplace. What do you think? Well, how you feel? I mean, answer, freely and uh, sincerely because I mean there is no bad or right or wrong answer because as we can see and as I can see uh, more and more people uh, looks not only on the salary they get and they are offered but also on the values that companies actually have and promote what is your opinion guys how do you feel about it yeah great question especially for HR uh, majors guys this Alexander, why why don't you go or Diana? So let me join if no one else is okay, here. Um, <laughs> so personally, I feel that um, then uh, employees uh, try to choose the company they want to work for. Uh, they don't choose only by salary or uh, like social package, uh, whatever. But they also pay attention uh, to 
the values the company has because the values create the culture. And the culture, uh, it uh, um, defines uh, how comfortable uh, you by yourself feel inside the company. So personally, I don't check uh, um, if the company uh, does some projects uh, uh, in uh, eco field or not. Uh, but what I do pay attention is the culture uh, is inside the company. Uh, and uh, I see the connection that uh, when the company thinks uh, not only about uh, itself, its profits, but also about uh, the community, the environment, the culture inside the company is better. Um, so I would say uh, there is, I don't directly check it. Meanwhile, it is important uh, because it creates uh, the culture and the atmosphere inside the company. Okay, so let me, uh, before uh, others will answer, let me just put it more like, you know, precisely. If you have two options, and for example, in one company that has really uh, cool, promote like deep um, developed social and environmental values, but the salary is there like, okay, let's say 10% lower, uh, no, let's say, no, 10, 20 whatever, 15% lower uh, than in the second company that actually doesn't have any values. I mean, it's a good, uh, well-recognized company, but it doesn't have these values, you know, like well, it's not a social or environmental company, but the salary is 15% higher. Um, the possibilities of promotion, the sphere is absolutely the same, but the one is more, you know, like with developed values and the second one is with less developed uh, values, everything, uh, the rest is the same, the salary, 15% difference. What would you choose, Veronika? Um, I just simply can't imagine uh, the situation uh, it exists imagine. in, in the world. Uh, and uh, considering that I don't have such experience, uh, I can't decide right now, like, you're creating uh, this spherical coin vacuum, you know? <laughs> Uh, then we have um, a situation which doesn't exist in the real world, and it's very difficult for me uh, to make the decision. Uh, well, I would say that um, all the companies I worked for before, I worked for Sanofi and for Yandex, um, all of them are quite uh, responsible uh, in terms of what they're doing. Um, so looking back, I would say that I choose responsible companies, but it was not... Uh, conscious, you know? Okay, okay. But uh, as uh, I, I cannot agree with you fully when you say that it's not a real situation, it's actually you can find it this on the market. I mean, maybe if you are comparing um, like big companies you uh, mentioned, they have to like actually promote and develop these values. Otherwise, uh, the, there will be no culture in the companies. But uh, mo again, it's that not on, only because they are like this, but also there are some external factors. But taking, for example, the same uh, with Yandex, I don't know, this other company that is smaller, maybe you won't find that, that developed values as Yandex have, but the salary is like higher than in Yandex. I mean, what will be your choice? So, I mean, okay, Veronika, I heard you, thank you. Maybe some, somebody else, but try to answer again with this concrete example of two companies, keeping in mind whatever examples, whatever sphere you want. Just maybe, two or three more answers, please. Maybe I can. Sure. I think I, I will, be, will be honest and I will say that I will choose the company which have higher salary, but uh, I think that uh, uh, maybe the situation when uh, there is no shared values uh, for the employees in the company will lead to, to the fact that I will leave it soon because for me it's really important that people uh, who are working together to work for the shared purpose and have some shared values which will help them to communicate and to make really something important together. Okay. Somebody else? Uh, may I add? Uh, I wanted to add about well-being because my master degree is actually about well-being. So I've learned something about that. And I wanted to say that it's a very sen sensitive term. And uh, really, you can say that um, you need to measure different things. It's not like uh, very sensitive to say, like, will you choose this or this in order to have your well-being? 
you need to measure a few components and it's uh, it can be personal as well it can depend on some situations so it's like uh, it's not only about work-life balance all these values are they about well-being so um sure but um mariana um I, as i mentioned just i mean when you are trying to uh uh, receive a concrete answer sometimes you have to model the situation of course that I mean you're going to the interview and you like your boss and on the other company you don't like your boss or I don't know you fall in love with the color of the walls in the office or with the uh, with the other uh, like a place you don't like how you feel inside that's absolutely true but as I mentioned just try and imagine that all other things are the same but everything is the same. You love both companies, but in one, you can understand that it is valued. You don't have you know, plastic uh, cups in the office. You, you're wasted, the, you waste the um, selected separately and uh, recycled or whatever. Uh, the company uh, offer you uh, to have uh, an electric car if you uh, having work to do a lot of business trips, you know, or whatever. I mean, it's like it has this value and it promote these values. And the other company just don't do this. Like, my question was more about this. Okay. Well, maybe we can even make it uh, sharper and tell about the industry where the, this company operates. If it's a fossil fuel industry, a very resource intensive company or a company from a sin industry like tobacco and alcohol companies, would that be a factor for you to pay attention? Yeah, to? why not? And you choose your uh, future employer? Because it looks like I see in the chat, I would choose a higher salary. Uh, that's the people who don't care for what kind of company, uh, the industry and the values, uh, which relate to sustainability. And those um, who do have policies like Lera uh, does. So maybe we can have a few opinions coming from you. Uh, maybe yeah. I can, uh, because uh, I think that if the company does not declare some of the values, it doesn't mean that it actually uh, do not have it. Uh, that is why it's really difficult, difficult to compare the companies because uh, may, there are many examples when the companies do write about the sustainability and so on, but actually they do nothing. Uh, so uh, the fact of having these values doesn't mean uh, that the company um, uh, adheres to them, or uh, another situation, if a company does not have these values, it doesn't mean that it, it uh, does not adhere to them also. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answers. I'm now reading the chat and also loving the answers that are there. Can I add? Sure. Uh, so, um, what about industry? Um, I work in an uh, oil field uh, company oil food services company. So uh, I think that it's uh, not uh, so ecological, uh, but actually uh, I think that uh, it's uh, really important um, uh, when your company, uh, actually my tool, um, do some uh, minimal uh, ecological things. For example, um, uh, we have uh, in our office uh, some point to collecting um, batteries. Uh, we have um, um, sorting and recycling paper. Uh, our company um, start to reduce uh, the usage of plastic uh, <laughs> in our office. And uh, we have uh, some, uh, um, some things uh, to uh, saving water for example when you go to the kitchen or toilet uh, you have some uh, uh, beautiful um, sentence uh, about, uh, like каждое um, капля имеет значение uh, so uh, I think that it's really important and uh, uh, when your company is not so ecological but if uh, it tries to be that it's important and uh, maybe uh, in this uh, situation I will um, um, I will choose a higher salary but uh, when the company uh, isn't ecological at all uh, I will 
find uh, uh, some other company. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, for um, as far as I got it from the chat and from the answers that we like discussed now, uh, I see that for many of you it's really important like the size of the salary, but also uh, the work-life balance. I saw it in the many uh, answers here, and I really like the answer about bringing your own values to the company that's great yeah i mean even the company even if the company already had its values it's really important that you promote them and continue doing this uh, you should always be active that's how yeah you can achieve much more in the future so here uh, as we now discuss the values in general that are in the world, like uh, the UN goals, uh, we discussed our values that we have in Duran Merlin uh, Vostok. Here you can see actually a kind of strategy with concrete KPIs we have today. Uh, we call it like we make it positive. It means like we make a positive impact on every sphere we can. And you see on the bottom here, it's like a house. I mean, this is like, you know, uh, an image because we are a company that uh, helps building houses. So we like present ourselves even as a house. And this, the like zero floor, <laughs> ground floor here, we have the uh, streamlining. So like the purpose, uh, the willingness of our employees and of our suppliers, of us as a company in, gen in general, to do something positive. And on the left, everything is concerning the society. On the right side here, everything is about the environment. So uh, the first thing that is really important for us is that our employees uh, uh, need to uh, really be willing to change, to make this positive impact in different spheres, whatever it concerns the society, making social products, uh, pro projects, uh, whatever it concerns the environment, thinking about the ecology, waste uh, source, uh, sources from which it is produced uh, and so on and so forth. After there is the main focus, uh, the main building here, and it's about uh, knowledge and management. So uh, before you start, to, you try to manage something, you need to be really deep in, on the topic. You really need to understand uh, how it works and what it is. So when it concerns to uh, our employees, let me do like this. When it concerns to when it comes to our employees, we try to train them a lot on different topics. We try to um, promote this uh, uh, di different um, knowledge among our employees. And every year we have a program. We have the courses that every employee had to. Um, study uh, and normally in the beginning of each year every employee with its with his or her manager have this meeting where they plan uh, in which sphere in which direction the employee uh, want to develop and on the basis of which you can choose different courses uh, when it comes to uh, environment here, we try uh, again to uh, understand more about different products and to raise awareness and to have this information about the level of the environmental responsibility of our products. We try to educate and train uh, again our employees, our suppliers about the responsible uh, production, consumption and uh, recycling. and. Um, we uh, are going to make uh, this access to 100 dedicated responsible projects at cost for our employees. So like, this is the KPI that promotes this uh, uh, knowledge about the positive impact of our activity on the environment. And this uh, is going to management. So which KPIs we are actually have about uh, management in the positive in, in the projects that have positive impact on the society and the environment and here you can see that uh, we uh, here actually i wanted to start more in detail uh, in our uh, stores there are a lot of employees and we are uh, presented in many countries or many cities as i already mentioned and um, 
a lot of social initiatives about which uh, my colleague Asia will tell you more uh, on the second part of our lecture. Uh, yeah, um, the second hour. Uh, she will tell you more in detail about different projects, but uh, it's really interesting that employees in the stores actually have a lot of initiative to work with the local communities. So most of the social initiatives actually arise from uh, you know, from inside of the company, it's not that they're in, I invented in the strategic level, uh, on the top management or the uh, man big managers in the central office, but it's more about the local initiatives that we have in our stores that after promoted uh, among all the stores. So it's really interesting thing here. And it's also uh, really define us as a social company that we are really proud of considering environmental issues uh, by 2025 at least 100 uh, 100 innovation innovative solutions for customer projects will be developed that means that we really want to promote this green uh, products uh, in our stores and now we are working at it with our suppliers and looking for different uh, interesting um, products that we can offer to our clients developing new business that reduce overconsumption and are based on a cost-effective model that means that we want to uh, sell goods that can be uh, resaled or uh, shared among uh, clients or, or at least uh, uh, repaired if they're broken. So we really try to reduce this overconsumption that exists now in the world. And the third KPI is 20% of the turnover addition due to the promotion of responsible consumption. They're interconnected with the first topic. So we're really trying to um, make the biggest positive impact on our supply chain and as the final result to promote this green product to our final clients. Um, and uh, as we now understand this uh, um, main KPI is here, what, when it comes to the basement of our house, it mostly concerns the operation thing and all the operation things are actually um, about buildings about warehouses about buildings and logistics we have and of course our clients that they travel and uh, how they're working like the operational work uh, in the office so here we also have different kpis and they are presented here on the right and the one that i for example i'm responsible for they concern the energy sphere and transport or the logistics sphere and if you have any questions here, for example, uh, how we are doing this, uh, because I, I'm not planning to be really particular on a lot of topics because we have a really a lot of stuff going on in the company. If some of you are interested in this energy and logistics spheres and the buildings management, you are free to ask and I'm really have, and I will have a lot of pleasure to tell you more in detail in uh, maybe closer to the end of this presentation. Here you can see the concrete KPI, how we are control uh, different processes in the company. So, I mean, this is a standard process, like you are a big business, you know, uh, you're making your strategy, you uh, focus on um, spheres on which you have the biggest impact, uh, on which uh, uh, your stakeholders want you to have a, a positive impact and which they want you to develop and um, you build the strategy as we saw on the previous slide and then to uh, make it more efficient you pose yourself uh, you pose yourself a kpi and develop different concrete projects that will help you to achieve these kpis and here you have um, four uh, uh, fields on which we have kpis that's not all of them but i wanted to make you you know um, examples uh, how we control our development, our progress uh, on achieving our goals. So if we are taking um, the sphere of energy, uh, we have this KPI of CO2 emissions uh, by uh, the matter, the met square matter of our store. Because I mean, the main uh, polluters, uh, the main operation things are going on in our stores. As we are not producing anything, it's not that, uh, uh, reasonable to have this indicator like i don't know for, for example for the ton of 
products we produced, uh, we make it to the square meter of um, uh, our store. And in 2018, you see the numbers and our goal is to reduce it by 15% in 2021. Uh, and we already elaborated a plan uh, and that consists of uh, transferring our stores to LED um, lightning uh, to building solar panels on, uh, on the roof or on the territory of our South uh, stores uh, and to um, buy green energy, buy green electricity for the stores that uh, for, for, for which it's not reasonable to construct uh, the proper uh, energy plants, for example. Because as you know, with solar, it's, for example, in Moscow, it's not economically viable to build it here because the installation here is really low, even though you have some particular spaces where the electricity might be a bit high if you are not connected to the grid. But still, uh, the installation is really weak and it's not economically viable to build such projects. For example, in Volgograd, exactly in Volsky, we have a store where the all factors are actually match each other. Uh, there, the insulation is quite high. The electricity in the store happened to be quite uh, expensive also. And the store is, on a, is in our ownership. So we had all the freedom, you know, to change something there. And this will be our pilot that this, uh, solar uh, station will be finished uh, by the end of the spring 2021. This is what our pilot and, and this station will cover 30% of annual uh, electricity consumption of the store. And afterwards, we plan to build the same uh, solar panels at least uh, in 15 hour stores. Uh, when it goes to the consumption of green uh, electricity, uh, in Russia, you need to uh, make your stores on the wholesale market because now we are on the retail market uh, and you can buy green electricity, renewable ele electricity produced from renewables on the, on the wholesale market. So it's a bit technical process. Uh, we are going to transfer more and more of our stores to the wholesale market and that will allow us to make contracts with uh, the producers of green energy and our goal here is to consu consume 100% uh, of renewable energy by the end of 2025. Talking about the transport here, um, we don't have our transport as a retail company. We hire um, transport companies uh, to deliver our goods and we have different, uh, let's say, uh, fields, different uh, um, yeah, different fields uh, uh, of transportation. One of them is uh, uh, that the one that we really can control uh, precisely is the transportation of goods from warehouses to our stores. And here we have a pilot uh, of introducing 19 uh, vehicles uh, on uh, concentrated uh, condensed natural gas on methane. Uh, the project started in the, at the end of 2019 and during 2020, the number of these vehicles, of these trucks, um, uh, well, uh, uh, rised to nine, 19 uh, vehicles. And it's not only uh, economically viable and economically reasonable solution because methane is much cheaper than uh, diesel, for example, but it also has a, a positive environmental impact because uh, by uh, transferring all our trucks uh, on uh, methane, we can decrease our emissions from logistics uh, by 30%. And uh, we decided to have another pilot uh, uh, during 2021. Uh, this is, uh, comes to another field. It's from delivery goods from the stores that the client ordered to the client's houses. So much uh, smaller uh, cars are needed to, the, to this uh, delivery. And we are going to um, test electric vehicles uh, here in 2021. And our goal here is not to uh, only have these electric vehicles, but we are really willing that they are um, 
charged from the green electricity. So uh, during the pilot, I think uh, they will be charged just from electricity from the grid. But when we decided to um, promote it more, you know, globally in our company, uh, all the stores that will have these electric vehicles will also consume green energy, green electricity. Uh, the third field is uh, recycling waste. Uh, in our company, we have kind of a lot of waste, and unfortunately, uh, since only since recently, uh, we started to work really uh, hard on this topic, a lot on this topic. And in 2020, we have the pilot uh, in one of our stores in Udino, where uh, we decreased by 75% uh, the amount of waste that were going to landfills. And by uh, making this pilot, now we're going to spread these uh, solutions uh, to step by step to the old stores we have. Of course, in the future, we are planning that all the um, waste that we produce will go will be recycled or uh, used uh, um, again. Uh, by the end of this year, or at maximum in the beginning of the next year, you may see uh, the containers that will be installed in over in all our stores. Not, I mean, not in all our stores, but for. First, it will be a pilot in six of our stores where uh, our clients can bring uh, their wastes, I mean, and to leave them separately. Afterwards, they will be recycled. Uh, it's our initiative to, again, promote this uh, um, tradition, this uh, practice of uh, separate collection of wastes. Um, yeah, and during uh, uh, this period, we have uh, we had only uh, temporary temporary act uh, activities uh, of collecting um, uh, separated um, waste from our clients, temporary uh, activities, tem temporary uh, um, events uh, about this topic, and as we uh, so we tested it, how the store uh, can proceed, it, uh, we who should. Um, uh, keep up with this project in the store and now as we have all the answers we are willing and we are ready to install the permanent um, containers uh, where all that where uh, where all of our clients can bring their waste and the fourth field is uh, actually products um, here we focused on uh, uh, two uh, main uh, directions it's uh, um, Oh my God, Kraski, color, color, pay paints. Oh my God, hey, I see. I'm looking at it in French, and all my minds are in French. Uh, uh, Learn automatically. French now too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's fine. Being a French so, company, yeah, we see how it works. Yeah, wow. sorry. <laughs> Sometimes, like uh, when I see French, all my thoughts are automatically get transferred to French. That's why I, I try to uh, immediately think uh, of afterwards like how to say it in English so yeah two field the two uh, there are two main fields uh, when it comes to products it's paintings uh, paints and um, wood uh, because we have uh, kind of a lot of products uh, in both of these spheres and um, we want to make it more sustainable and now we are working on promoting FSC certification among our suppliers for example uh, we uh, have a system where for example the supplier uh, presents and uh, proves uh, its certificate uh, that its uh, wood is uh, really FSC certified so we are really working hard on it and we try to control it more strictly in the near future as well our goal here, of course, is that all our, all our products in paints and uh, wood are sustainably produced and certified as well. And um, if we're talking about more general topic here, um, first, social audits were held uh, when it comes to our suppliers and how the suppliers yeah, and how they produce their products. But also since 2020, uh, we are making environmental audits of our suppliers. Um, till now, I think three or four were held, and now we are like 
practicing uh, and practicing the methodology that was elaborated and in the future of course all the suppliers will be audited also on environmental issues So we had now uh, a really deep focus, not only in the Rwanda land uh, operations and how we are doing, but also we discussed a bit of, you know, generally uh, the values, how you are regarding values. And if you are on this course, you are, that means that you are interested in sustainability and you're interested in this topic. And maybe some of you, as already Katerina mentioned, whatever it is, HR uh, specialists or just managers of the business you maybe you may need and i'm sure you will definitely need to uh, apply these sustainability uh, skills uh, in practice what i wanted to share with you is that sustainability manager as i am i'm not an ecologist i mean after i graduated from uh, the departments of ecology and sustainability in Gimo, I could work as a, an ecologist uh, in uh, whatever company, in whatever sphere, but it's not actually what it means to. Now there is uh, another thing, another sense that is uh, incorporated that represents the sustainability manager. Here you can see on the blue um, square that it's a specialist or manager or professional in any sphere. It can be oil and gas, it can be um, iron sphere, it can be agriculture, it can be restaurants, it can be a fashion sphere. Whatever sphere you can take, everywhere nowadays there are processes that are connected to sustainability, to consume less, consume less to produce from sustainable resources, also social dif different social aspects, and so on and so forth. So you are actually a manager but you really need to understand deeply uh, what is green and what is not because if not you will be easily uh, whelmed up with greenwashing or whatever and you will not present a concrete and right image of the company you are working for so i for me the sustainability manager is again a person a specialist who knows how to make environmentally and socially friendly solutions that generate added value to the project and the company. So when we're talking about the ecologists in a traditional meaning, this is a great specialist that a lot of uh, different businesses really needs, but it's working more with the documentation, you know, it's controls that the company or the project does not uh, forbid, uh, does not, um, do something wrong doesn't do uh, or create something that is not allowed by law or other requirements the purpose the mission of the sustainability manager is different is to create an added value and here there are some uh, some uh, different um, directions uh, that can be realized as a that can realize sustainability manager in a retail company and Actually, we have we cover our our department consists of five uh, um, employees, and we actually cover all of these uh, uh, functions. Do you have any function you like most, and maybe we can discuss it on this slide? Just have a look, and maybe you ask something. I have I think there are a lot of questions in the chat. Meanwhile, you are looking at these. Yeah, I will have a quick look on the chat. There was a question of one about the challenges, Christina, which you have in the company doing sustainable development. Maybe you can cover this one. I think that would be also of yeah. importance. What is difficult in our context in Russia in terms of implementing um, sustainable development inside of the company? You know, there are different difficulties because uh, um, I am really lucky that I appeared in the company from the moment actually everything started to start. I mean, there was my boss Ekaterina and a year after she hired me. So like I saw the whole process, I mean, where we are now, wow. And when we were like, everything was just, you know, step by step, everything was developing. And of course, we, are, we were something new for the traditional management of the company. I mean, though the top management really was willing, was willing to uh, develop this sphere, a lot of questions, operational questions, arise from different departments. Because again, as I mentioned here, you really work a lot in a collaboration with different departments. 
So like whatever it logistics, whatever whatever it is an energy sphere product, you work not by yourself, not only within your own department, but there are a lot of interconnections with other departments. And of course, this is the main difficulty because sometimes you know, people just first is like you know denial. They like okay, that that's not important. Or the second step is that. But come on, it's a bit more expensive if we're doing, if we're like refusing from these suppliers who produce not sustainably and choose and make the tender only between the suppliers that have this certification, certificate that they're produced, for example, this sustainably. And you should always, in, in this work, you need to always educate your uh, colleagues because uh, this is like uh, really, you know, every time you are like a mentor you understand you're explaining to them that okay guys yes traditionally this uh, process for example i don't know building like building of our stores they build the stores only basing on the requirements uh, government requirements costs uh, was the uh, how you how the building of uh, that has the commercial purpose should be built and they don't really think about any ecological standards you know but when you are trying and explaining them what benefits will be if you are like for example building the new warehouse with accordance of the green standard um, you educate them you're showing them how uh, okay first the capex the investments may be a bit bigger but after you also uh, consume less of energy if you are implementing different energy efficiency technologies from the beginning um, you uh, uh, your workers feel better in the um, office that is uh, uh, has automatic regulation of the temperature and ventilation for example that your battery is heating like crazy and you need to open the window yeah that that's not sustainable and you waste a lot of money on heating but actually nobody needs it because they open the window so i mean people understand this like by from different factors and they don't have this you know global picture and actually one of our um functions even today when the company every uh, employee in our company knows about us and they have their own you know like sometimes ideas how we can help how how they can provide this positive uh, impact by themselves and sometimes they even um sometimes they even suggest us to, like different projects still they have on their partial uh, understanding of how this sustainable is so yeah the main difficulty if uh, answering is that you're always needing to educate and explaining why it is important to do from the beginning and not just invent money and after we see how it will be like that is not the right thing to do okay christina I, i'm a timekeeper here as well and we're over with one hour and 20 minutes you will not deliver it but <laughs> Wow, the time flies, really. Yeah, the time flies. And, uh... But I mean, I've covered all the main topics after there were like some projects. Maybe, Ekaterina, can I have like two questions from the guys? Yeah. Which projects do you want me to cover to talk uh, more in detail, for example, something concerned energy of calculation of, uh, of greenhouse emissions or our um, transportation on green uh, on methane or on electricity? Like, just ask me and I will, I will try to answer kind of yeah. shortly. Let's have a look in the chat box. Looks like uh, green logistics, sustainable logistics is of interest uh, mm -hmm. marketing as well. And the communities, what are you doing? Uh, it's strangely that I, I can't see the chat. I just, it's not opening for me. Uh, you can can I stop the demonstration for yes, a second? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not opening. Um, this way you can see now, I believe. Mm -hmm. Guys, can you? Um, you could you know where is exactly from the about the logistics that I do it more it would be very quickly. interesting to listen about sustainable logistics uh, that was what, ex what, what exactly I mean can you precise your question who posed it Sophia are you with us Well, she just keeps uh, writing. writing. Okay, so I mean, for us, just a minute, please. Okay, um, for us, the sustainable logistics uh, is that uh, 
we make it more efficient. So we download, we upload our trucks uh, to maximum as possible. We are trying to make circular um, logistics so that to make that our trucks never goes empty from point B to point A, from point A to point B. And uh, when we are going to, so again, as with energy, we decrease as maximum as we can. And uh, all the rest, I mean, we still need the logistics, we're trying to find greener solutions and for bigger trucks, it's methane. And for smaller vehicles, uh, the electricity uh, cars, the electricity vehicles are really good op opportunity. And as I mentioned, um, in 2021, we have, we will have the first project. It will be the first pilot. It will be in uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, there will be two uh, trucks, small trucks, small two vehicles um, working on electricity that they will deliver goods from uh, St. Petersburg stores to the clients. Yeah, and we will test them for a couple of months and make a decision how this, how we can spread more, how we can use more of such vehicles. Because again, there are. Um, it's not that easy as you think, because just uh, we should always remember that to make this uh, uh, project economically uh, attractive, you need to, to have your own uh, electricity chargers. And uh, when the stores is already built, normally the capacity, electricity capacity is limited there because I mean, it is uh, transferred to lightning, to ventilation. It's, and not all the stores have extra uh, electricity capacity. That's why we are now trying to understand uh, how it will be managed. So uh, in the future, is everything, if everything will be as planned, we will have uh, all the vehicles that transport goods from uh, stores to the clients uh, on electricity and they will be charged uh, in two uh, hubs maybe in uh, uh, whole uh, in the um, warehouse that we have in the St. Petersburg and the second hub will be for example in one or two other stores so again it's not only about the vehicles as it, it may seem but again about the buildings and making the whole infrastructure for uh, this project. I wondered how the logistics are built and what are the principles in general. Okay, I mean, yeah, yeah you uh, logistics, yeah, because uh, again, logistics is, um, we don't own it. Normally it's transport companies, but now we are uh, going more to, you know, we are making our own, we hire our own colleagues to uh, I don't know how to, to make routes to make uh, to um, Guide, uh, create guidelines. No, no, not the guidelines. It's marshutizatsa. So they like they are planning the routes, mm -hmm. how the vehicles will deliver from the stores to the clients. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to control. And uh, we will. Why we chose uh, Saint Petersburg to make this pilot with electric vehicles because here there there is also a pilot about regarding this marshutizatsa. I don't know how it's better to say in English. So like there, the, our own uh, employees plan the routes for the delivery mm -hmm. because it's really difficult if the tra otherwise with transport co company, you just give them the products that needs to be delivered and they deliver it. And we want to go away from this uh, strategy. We want to control uh, more uh, ourselves the logistics there. Christina, thanks a lot. I think we just have uh, time for one last question. Uh, yeah. which would be great if you can cover it um, because I think that shows your role as um, a company that promotes sustainable development in Russia within uh, your community of suppliers. And sure. uh, for guys to better understand if you have the same standards and approaches for all divisions and countries where you operate. I think that would be interesting finishing uh, point. Yeah, I mean, when I'm saying that all our initiative and sustainable sustainability strategy comes from like inside, that also means that, uh, of course, it's our um, international uh, fathers and mothers that actually push us to become greener. 
uh, yeah, actually the goal that I mentioned, for example, to consume 100% of green electricity or to decrease uh, uh, by 20% the greenhouse emissions from logistics by 2025, this is the global goal. This is the goal that uh, makes ADEO group for every uh, business unit. But I mean, uh, Russia is a bit different from European countries and sometimes we have our own interim, at least interim goals uh, that are different from our European colleagues. But the strategy in general, yes, it is international and it is the same for the all business units. It's like, let's say global. But afterwards, the projects and how we achieve these KPIs, how we pose it interim goals, they are more, of course, uh, based on national capacities that we have. Yeah, well, I think you're a great example how you can implement it. And that was a great study, a case study, a real one. I wish we could meet in real life, but because of yes. and all of the restrictions we are not allowed, yeah. well, I hope we can continue. So thank you so much for being so insightful and sharing the story of uh, your journey on sustainable development with Leroy. I think that's yeah, thank inspiring you. and uh, a lot of uh, information to digest. I guess, guys, need at least 10 minutes to make a break before your colleague Isa joins us. Yeah, and I want us to make a, a little breach uh, to the sphere Isa will cover. Here I see that projects for local communities, Isa is the top in the sphere and she will tell you really a lot about this. I will trying to uh, focus more on the global strategy we have and on the projects that I'm responsible for that is more connected to energy and uh, logistics, everything and buildings also. I still will cover everything that is going to social sphere and I think you will love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. For being Guys, here. be more active. I still always really like when people are active. So answer her questions. Yes, yeah, so we'll work on engagement. <laughs> this is the disadvantage of doing this online. I am yeah, suffering from yeah. this too, but I hope we ha will have more engagement, guys. That's yeah. um, Be active. Yes, we have 37 people, so people are still here, but they are very <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Um, okay, I'm going out, so you wait yeah, for us. Bye-bye. So. Thank, Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, now a pause for everyone. Uh, Nina, у нас перерыв на 9 минут, да, и после этого я не буду так, я, наверное, сейчас um, сделаю остановку записью. Uh, меня зовут Ася, я руководитель направления социальных проектов и благотворительности компании. Oh, I'm sorry, Ася, uh, we have to switch in English because the class is in English. Okay, okay, let's talk me a little bit in Russia about camera and all this and all this yeah. stuff and then we switch on in, in English and continue in English. Так вот, меня зовут Ася, я руководитель направления социальных проектов и благотворительности компании Лера Мерлен Восток. Отвечаю за две страны, за Россию и Казахстан. У меня дофигища работы, я ничего не успеваю, и я сейчас подключилась на полтора часа к вам, чтобы вам рассказать и поделиться опытом. Поэтому просто мне кажется, что из разряда уважения можно включить камеры, отвлечься от своих дел, и вы всегда успеете их сделать. Тут по-русски ты не разберешься с этой темой, а мы сейчас еще и по-английски будем говорить. Вот, поэтому, коллеги, вы всегда успеете, мне кажется, там что-то почитать, где-то побыть. Вот. Тем более то, о чем я сейчас буду говорить, это не какая-то истина из книг или там, про это нигде не прочитать и нигде про это не услышать. Это исключительно опыт, опыт человека, который какое-то время в этом работает, так еще и работает в огромной компании. Поэтому если просто э, не получится диалога, я думаю, что сложно будет э, что-то что-то вы, вынести из этого, это просто будет waste on my time и waste of your time. Так что давайте как-то включаться вот, и попробуем из этого всего извлечь не просто... Я, это не моя работа вам что-то рассказывать, это делают ä, преподаватели в университетах, я не собираюсь уж тем более вас ничему учить, чему я могу вас научить, я сама... Мне не 50 лет, да, чтобы там вам какие-то мудрости передавать. Я просто вам расскажу, как выглядит все на рынке. Более того, 
все, что я буду сейчас говорить, не является истиной в последней инстанции. Можно со мной спорить, можно говорить, а я не согласен, можно высказывать свое мнение, вот, можно просто поднимать руку и сказать, а можно добавить, и это было бы вообще прекрасно. Более того, я для вас подготовила какой-то способ в современном мире как-то общаться через разные классные там, приложухи, вот, чтобы вам хоть как-то было интересно все это слушать. Вот, поэтому буду благодарна, если вы включитесь, окей? Спасибо большое. Да, я вижу один, два, три человека из присутствующих, сколько у нас, 34. Ну, давайте все-таки мы проявим уважение к нашим гостям, да? люди действительно очень заняты и специально для вас выделили время, это уникальная возможность, поэтому из знака уважения ко всем... Я... Еще раз тоже прошу от себя включить ваши камеры. Я... я тоже нахожусь дома, и, возможно, кто-то сзади будет заходить. Вы не обращайте внимания, потому что мы все работаем и э, выходим на учебу из домашних условий. У меня тут будут бегать кони, лошади, там, люди, животные. Не обращайте внимания. И я тоже уверена, что все мы нормально воспринимаем задний фон, который является бытовым. Спасибо огромное. Стало намного легче потому что хочется говорить с людьми, а не с черным экраном. Супер. Спасибо. Тогда можно приступать. Я попробую сейчас вывести презентацию. Видно вам? Да. Окей. Режим ага. полный экран. Ага. Спасибо большое. Я даже заморочилась, сделала вот эту анимацию, чтобы веселее было. Well, uh, today in uh, 40 minutes, I will try to, we will try together to figure out uh, what corporate and social responsibility of business really mean. Uh, what are the main participants in CSR? It's like uh, corporate social responsibility and how it is connected with the government. It's our topic. Um, to start with, uh, uh, over the past few years in non-profit environment, uh, there has uh, a little, uh, very little information about CSR. Since recent years, less and less materials uh, on this topic have appeared in TV, in news, um, or maybe in radio. Uh, for example, really, how uh, how often do you watch TV show where uh, where successful Russian business and social responsibility uh, is told about? So, uh, to my mind, it's uh, not very often. Uh, so. Uh, the main question why uh, why a lot of companies pay attention to social responsibility why uh, a lot of uh, efforts are done and nobody uh, hear about this so the question is very interesting uh, let's start mainly i would like uh, one moment i will send in uh, miro uh, a link Uh, and I will I ask you to follow the link one moment. Uh, give me one moment. There is a chat box. Uh, yes. You can mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. One moment. I will ask you to follow the link. Copy it somehow. Okay, great. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> oh, there is a lot of text. Sorry about this. Last link. Try it, please. Is it Miracom app board? That's what we yes. Does it work? Is it okay? Um, I think we just have a general link to this Miracom app, but Let's not. Ah, I see. Yes, yes. I, I, it's earlier the message. Um, 
which you sent earlier. Does ev everyone sure. see it? No. Do we have to register? Okay, I can type it once again. So this, the last link, I think that's what. Um, yes. Does it work? So let's see. Yes, it works. Yes, I just want to start from the simple from uh, CSR concept. Uh, could you please give some synonyms or phrases you can uh, characterize CSR? Just take five minutes to think and write down words or phrases uh, in a card in Miro following the link. Uh, then we will discuss. Uh, just don't hesitate to write any words which are associated with CSR. I just want to understand uh, how uh, uh, your point of view. If some words you don't know in English, don't hesitate to write in Russian. There is no problem. Then we will translate and discuss them. Okay, I think um, you need to sign up first for, for this app. And then once you're done with that, that's what I've just done. Looks like then we can add our commands. Yeah, and I see the names of the people on the screen. Okay, great. It should be working. Maybe it's easier to share my screen with this mirror to see all the answers. Over yeah, 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 I think that will be more <laughs> interactive. Okay. Let's see what is happening. Yeah, exactly. Loving nature, I like it so much. <laughs> Think of nature. Okay. Connection to earth. Okay. Eco friendly. Great. Responsible consumption. Very good. Friendly culture and great mission. Okay. What is this? Um, being responsible, great answer. Future for children. Thank you so much to someone. It's really easy to get inside of this app. You can use any of your social media accounts and just get in. So it takes one minute to get in. And we're waiting for more of your answers maybe some tools of uh, corporate social responsibility which companies use to do the social projects or uh, any words uh, which you can hear while reading or listening about social projects yeah i mean we had so much theory so many cases on csr i cannot imagine that you don't have any associations left after <laughs> so much writing that you have done on reflections guys oh i love the love one <laughs> <laughs> by the way uh tinder also has a uh, uh, social uh, responsibility mission <laughs> you can find it about it in internet <laughs> Yeah, they all love the answers. <laughs> there is a great newspaper, by the way, it's called uh, Taki Dela. Mm -hmm. And some months ago, I read an article about uh, Tinder, so you can find <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, we're all kind of uh, lacking connection, real life connections now. <laughs> so I'm talking about what's missing in the COVID time. So what do we have more? Responsible consumption. Yeah. Kind, kindness. Okay. It's mm -hmm. me, great. Uh, I expect that you can write something like volunteering, something like uh, sustainability, maybe charity, maybe pro bono, maybe philanthropy. But you more about uh, feelings. Okay, I understand. 
<laughs> Taking care. Yeah, Soil, Soul and Society. That's the name of the book uh, that uh, the, is the last part of this course, the reading. <laughs> Uh -huh. That's what I can recognize. Reflection. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, you're thinking about environment. Uh, about nature, about relationships, uh, relationship between people, about health, about consumption. What else? About responsibility. And future generations, future in general. Generations, yes. Uh, it's great because um, indeed, uh, CSR includes a large list of actions, projects, activities in the economical, environmental, social fields inside and outside the company. Uh, thank you very much for your answers. If you don't mind, I would like to make a photo of them. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's go to presentation. Uh, mm, one thing which I want to add is that uh, it is important, for example, to explain that uh, social responsibility and corporate charity are not the same thing. Uh, and the second part, uh, the, the second thing is a part of the first much broader concept. And uh, today we're talking about new era of social responsibility, of uh, business responsibility. And today it's not uh, only about voluntary um, integration, it's not about investing, it's not only about responsible of impacts, it's not only about brand image, I mean ethical behavior of the company. Today, social responsibility is about, redi about redesigning business process. This means that the company do not comprehend, uh, uh, the company do not um, uh, compensate the harm of uh, uh, the harm of, of making services or making goods, uh, harm to the uh, econo economy, harm to the environment, harm to the future generation. Today, we're talking about uh, the process where companies learn to conduct business, produce goods and services without causing the harm. So it's not about... I'm sorry, and we still see uh, this uh, wonderful interactive board from Miro. <laughs> you can uh, switch. Yes. So, uh, we need to uh, switch the screen to your okay. first day. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I will try. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it looks like the best part of it was the drawing exercise. That's what <laughs> I like the most, I guess. Just doing words is not as fun as, as drawing that this software allows. But I will make a photo of this board. So thank you guys for drawing something. It was an art therapy. Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, the main thought that the main conclusion is that uh, today uh, CSR is a part of business strategy. And we will uh, talking about social responsibility from this point of view. Uh, uh, in 2015, uh, it was clear uh, that the most pressing problem of, ma of mankind is the fight against hunger, poverty, unemployment, environmental pollution, overcoming uh, inequality. Uh, and all these problems cannot be solved by the government authorities alone. And uh, it is the uh, interaction of government influence and business opportunity. And this requires, um, and uh, to solve this problem requires uh, companies to join to this process. That is why uh, the United Nations has developed 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, and uh, in 2015, it was the first time 
uh, United Nations uh, invite business companies to join to work with government. So uh, that is why these uh, 17 sustainable development goals are very important and it is new era of uh, uh, sustainable development and of CSR of the companies. Uh, this thing I want to tell you, let's go further. Uh, let's talk about tools. Uh, the first uh, main tool is charity. It's like the simple one. The company itself can allocate money or other assets in form of donation. Uh, it is provision of monetary and other resources to a nonprofit or charitable organization to support uh, its activities, for example, holding charitable events. Uh, and uh, um, this is simple and also it is implemented in uh, our company, but I want to tell you about more formats of charity in other companies I face sometimes, for example, uh, fundraising. Um, it is a process among employees and clients. Uh, it's collection of voluntary donations in cash or otherwise for charitable activities, which are organized by the company itself. And another, uh, uh, another approach of charity is grant management. It is uh, an increase in employee charitable contribution from uh, company uh, from company fund uh, to an employee so that he donates uh, to non-profit organization by himself. So it means that uh, the company gives some money, for example, uh, to the employee and then employee can choose what kind of uh what kind of uh, organization to donate uh, it's very interesting form because uh the company can donate by itself but uh to make uh engagement by employees uh, on a higher level they just invite through given opportunities to donate so it's quite interesting approach another one is uh, sponsorship uh, maybe somebody knows the difference between sponsorship and charity. Maybe somebody can answer. Anyone who had an experience in this field? If you don't know, just don't worry, don't hesitate. You can at least think loudly <laughs> together with us. No, well, we didn't cover it explicitly in the course, so maybe you can tell from, from practice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, charity is, it is donation, and uh, uh, the company does not demand anything in return, mm -hmm. and sponsorship, uh, it is the transfer of money, goods or services for advertising and promotion. So it's like a service, getting service for donation. Uh, one moment i have a lot of chats and i'm getting a lot of messages i want to close them and we have some questions for you already uh, in the chat here too okay uh, maybe we can we can address them after you're done with the presentation or yes. if you want you're great Another uh, tool is supporting volunteer uh, efforts. Maybe some, some of you are already volunteers. It will be great to listen to your experience and you can tell us if you want. Uh, just uh, raise hand and we'll give you a uh, voice. <laughs> the main aim for, uh, for companies is to keep employees engaged by making different volunteer opportunities available uh, and providing a social outlet at the same time. In fact, uh, volunteers looking for ways to give back and, uh, and make a difference. Uh, for nonprofit organization, it's also very important because for them it's a big help. Uh, we support volunteer uh, efforts that uh, match our company mission and uh, we think about the impact business. Uh, we want to make um, the impact uh, bigger. Uh, and that, that's why we want to um, 
like uh, we want to gather all the people who are ready to uh, take part in uh, volunteering and we try to give them opportunities to do it at their workplaces or uh, during their work day. Uh, our, em uh, employ uh, our employees can collect trash, conduct training for children or do master classes for children and adults, walk dogs, help homeless people, paint walls or even help with, for example, apartment renovations for elderly. Uh, I will a little bit later show you our uh, volunteering calendar, we have it, and we're going to uh, conduct this uh, calendar next uh, uh, next year also. Another one is uh, uh, do you see something on the slide? Because I think that ah okay. Yeah, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Another one is helping is helping employees. Uh, oh, sorry, another one is territory support programs. In my opinion, uh, this is a very important area. It is extremely in demand in Russia because the authorities do not have enough resources for their infrastructure of cities, not to mention small settlements. We see our value in uh, projects uh, about the ecology of cities and in their appearance. Um, I will maybe tell a little bit more about uh, examples later. Um, yes, I think I will later tell them examples. Mm -hmm. then, uh, ecology and waste. Uh, today, businesses have a huge impact on the environment and enterprises uh, overuse available natural resources and uh, uh, they cause serious threats to the biological diversity of our planet. And of course, this is an urgent need to undertake diverse actions to reduce this uh, bad uh, uh, impact of business. Um, and uh, we're talking not only about changing business process, we're also talking about social part of this uh, issue. For example, we have developed an educational eco lesson for school children, which is taught by our employees in free time. Uh, another one is uh, accessible environment. Uh, the goal of this tool uh, is to increase person's quality of life by uh, enhancing their independence and mobility. What we're talking about? We're talking about creating an environment within the company in which all people would feel comfortable, blind, uh, hard of hearing, elderly, and etc. And also the project implies work on services and product offer. Uh, for example, let me give me an example. For example, people with uh, disability have a need to create a safety and comfortable house. For example, people with, uh, uh, people with, uh, it's called, uh, Musculoskeletal device. It's, господи, по русски это проблема с опорным двигательным аппаратом. So people with a, a musculoskeletal device need uh, handrails in their bathroom, and people in wheelchairs requires to open the window with this handle at the bottom of the window, not as we, uh, not like this in the bottom of the window. So, and we as comp uh, and we as like a company who are uh, ready to uh, serve any client, we should offer a window with installation service taking into account this feature. So for us, uh, accessible environment is about a special uh, range of goods and uh, services for such people. Mm -hmm. huh? Uh, another one is social entrepreneurship support. Uh, we're, talk, uh, we're talking about, uh, for example, uh, uh, in the village near Arhangelsk, uh, there is uh, like a, a small community of retired grand, grandmothers and they uh, see a few beautiful rugs. Rugs are like kovriki. They are of high quality, beautiful, and, uh, for example, affordable for the price. 
So they're the same great uh, rugs as we sell from China. So the question is, why can't we sell rugs from this uh, great uh, uh, grandmothers from village under Hungarysk? So the question is obvious, yes, we can. And so supporting entrepreneurship, a social entrepreneurship is about supporting such um, people who use uh, uh, special social groups in producing their goods or produce goods for such special groups, social groups. And so a lot of companies support uh, such business and maybe famous IKEA. So also uh, we follow this uh, direction. These are all tools which uh, Leora Merlin used to implement uh, CSR uh, policy, but uh, of course, there are, uh, the range of such tools is much wider. Uh, and one more, which we don't have, but I want to tell you, I like it so much, is called a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone who knows what does it mean? Apart from me, but I'm keeping silence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I heard it for the first time. <laughs> It's my favorite one. I enjoy reading about sabbatical. <laughs> Someone say that again, please. Okay. Um, sabbatical. It's uh, uh, sabbatical. It's a period of uh, paid uh, leave uh, for employees uh, while they can uh, travel or maybe study. Um, this uh, uh, this type of time is common in large organizations and it is usually granted after seven years of work and traditional sabbatical is a year long, uh, though it can be shorter or longer, it depends on the reason for taking this professional break. Uh, and uh, in Russia it called the Tvorchsky Otpusk and uh, one of the um, a type of sabbatical, it is called social sabbatical. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, some companies are getting behind this trend of implementation a CSR in everyday life and encouraging their employees to think uh, outside of the box and uh, it comes to their time spent outside of the office. For example, the company Patagonia offers its workers a two month uh, paid sabbatical to volunteer for an environmental company of, uh, of any company they choose uh, connected with this problem, uh, with environmental problem. Uh, and uh, for example, people are leaving for Africa to, to teach t children or they go to Latin America to work in nonprofit organization and help them with uh, Bona. Ah, by the way, I forgot to tell you about volunteering. There are two types of volunteering. Uh, social, when you go and do something with your own hands, for example, paint the wall, uh, or intellectual volunteering, it's called pro bono. Maybe you ever heard about this. Uh, when you share your skills, for example, um, lawyers advise um, non-profit organization on uh, legal issues. Or hair, uh, or hair uh, dresser cuts homeless person hair for free, or a programmer, for example, teaches the web programming children from the orphanages. So it's also called uh, volunteering, but one part is social when you do it by your hands, and another one is um, pro bono when you share your experience. Uh, so social, uh, social sabbatical is sabbatical paid by company when an employee devotes himself to work in non-profit sector. So I like this tool very much. <laughs> Do you use it uh, in your company? Uh, um... We don't have it. We don't have it, but uh, maybe one day I will win <laughs> and we'll have it. Because in, at HSE, we actually have pro bono volunteering for students, which is called uh, Jarmarka Projektov, where students apply and um, they volunteer intellectually in any research activities or they organize forums themselves. So this is already implemented. And the very first report HSE did on the third mission of the university, which is our CSR report from the university, that 
was also about these kinds of activities. So just to give you a little bit uh, of information on what's happening in the university. Since great. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And does anybody from this group take part in this? Uh, from this class? Uh, yeah. As participants, because we now have the Green Business School as a research project, which I'm leading uh, currently at HSC. And um, guys, they took part in the survey that we did. Uh, and yes, Alexander Duba and many of the others. So Great. that was uh, also part of this engagement. Because if you implement sustainable development inside of any organization, first thing you need to know, what are your stakeholders thinking about this, right? Of course, of yeah. course. This is the correct approach. Thank you very much for the information. Very interesting. <laughs> By the way, I uh, just wanted to show you these um, uh, volunteer actions for uh, this year. Uh, you can see that they are very different. There is a range of different topics, uh, and all them all, all of them are about uh, sustainable goals. So we try to uh, somehow teach our employees uh, in all uh, cities and all stores about this. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our uh, history, <laughs> if, I could, if we can uh, announce it like a history <laughs> about our story. Our company has always had an important focus on social oriented culture. Since uh, the first store in Russia appeared in 2004 in Tishi in Moscow region, employees and management themselves came up with uh, implemented small social projects or charitable projects. Although, uh, of course, there was uh, no formalization strategy at that time at all. And there was only a desire of people to help others to make the world a better place. And all these small social projects were very localized. And then in 2013, the first internal studies of the company's culture uh, were carried out. And they showed that the social side of the business is really important for our employees. Uh, and uh, uh, the company became large and the corporate culture was formed. And uh, we were proud that social responsibility became a part of such culture. And uh, this social responsibility culture has always been uh, employee oriented uh, on the one hand. And uh, on the other hand, it has remained community orient oriented, community of the country where our story is, uh, is located. So uh, we go from the employees project, uh, from his desire to take part, and we try to uh, remain this strategy. Uh, and as a result, in 2013, we began to work in the formation of our sustainable development strategy. And in 2019, uh, and in, in 2018, it became clear that we had enough experience in uh, social charity to reach a more systemic level, uh, level of sustainable development strategy. And at this level, uh, 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 at that level, uh, impact of communities has grown. The company formulated its uh, value system. I think uh, Christina told you about them. Uh, there, uh, we have five values uh, and one of them will make it positive. Uh, you see it. Uh, thus, the company's task was uh, to support such, uh, the company's task was to remain this support to uh, employees initiatives. Uh, this is not uh, only corresponds to our social strategy uh, of the business, but it also helps to establish and maintain uh, ties with the local community in the cities of our stores. That's why it's very important. Uh, the next stage uh, of the formation of CSR strategy in our company is profanalization of CSR management. Uh, we uh, got a uh, department in uh, uh, in top uh, uh, like top level of our company, 
uh, most uh, importantly um, uh, to say that uh, we still want to be ori uh, oriented on our uh, um, employees uh, initiatives. It's the main uh, thing we want to remain, we want to save. But um, on the other hand, uh, being uh, professional uh, means uh, not to uh, being professional means to increase awareness of uh, our employees uh, and to increase their desire to get involved uh, through recognition and a wide range of these initiatives, which are conducted by uh, top management. So to sum up, the main features, social projects are focused on the local needs of region, employees approach and professionalization of corporate social responsibility management. Let's go further. Um, our mission uh, is to ensure equal opportunities uh, for people uh, in, difficult, in difficulties to improve housing conditions and live in better environment. Our mission is connected with our business mission. Uh, we believe that with our federal uh, that uh, we believe that it is important for us to remain this uh, local in social aspect as well uh, as we uh, were from the beginning in 2004. Uh, over the past two years, we have done uh, we have done 170 local social projects. Uh, this is a reason to proud, of course, and especially. Uh, when these projects were uh, initiated and managed by our employees by themselves. And here an interesting question. Uh, we have done 170 social projects throughout the country. Uh, is this help considered to be big enough to be noticed? Uh, noticed, for example, by media, for example, why don't uh, they show us on TV or on news? Or do the authorities uh, in cities come to us with an offer of cooperation? Or uh, whether professionals from the non-profit sector, for example, charitable foundations, contact us to work together? Uh, this is a, uh, the question to discuss how uh, corporate social responsibility should be organized and uh, uh, where is GR in this question? So let's talk about JAR. Give me one minute to switch on the light. Okay, how our social responsibility should be organized, especially in Russia. Uh, the first one uh, is about uh, assistance directly to uh, orphanages, hospitals, nursery homes, sports schools, and others. Uh, such assistance assumes uh, uh, that the uh, ultimate beneficiaries are governments, agencies, and don't, and they are not individuals, they are not personals. Uh, because, from, uh, because from this point of view of compliance, we cannot work directly with these uh, groups. Uh, and uh, such assistance is mainly aimed to support the main activities of the institution. Uh, it's not about supporting uh, people with something, it is about supporting the institutions. It's uh, the main thing uh, you need to understand. Uh, for example, we in uh, our company have uh, 15 orphanages uh, in our care. Uh, and maybe you may uh, have heard that today children in orphanages have more benefits than uh, those uh, children from a simple families. And it is uh, really true. Many companies have been investing a big money, really big money, last 10 years in such way of helping. And the standard of living uh, of such orphanages does not depend on the state anymore. It's really depend, uh, dire depend directly on uh, companies' help. Uh, and at the same time, we consider this assistance to orphanages as a big project. Uh, and uh, uh, if, uh, look at this pro if look at this assistance as a project, 
uh, there are three participants in this project. The one is government, another one business, and the third one state local institutions. Uh, but um, I want to emphasize that business and government uh, have uh, uh, no connection in such projects because we help orphanages. Orphanages also uh, is budgeted by government. So there is no any cooperation. Uh, and the help is very simple. We just uh, can give money and help uh, with the uh, programs which they conduct, but we can't help uh, people directly in this case. Uh, another one is helping to get involved uh, uh, social needs and problems of society requires experience and special knowledge. And this is why uh, professionals from the charity sector are tracked uh, in uh, all countries uh, in CSR. Uh, the level of trust, for example, in Russian Federation of nonprofit organizations is quite low, uh, despite the fact that there are uh, really many projects and many nonprofit organizations. Uh, but uh, uh, they are not enough. Uh, there are not enough such organizations to cover all pains that exist in our society, and their level of management is really low. Uh, and the question is why nonprofit uh, um, companies interested in cooperation with business, and the answer is quite simple. Uh, the level of trust uh, to our brand is really high. Uh, to some extent, it is much higher than in uh, than to the local uh, nonprofit organization in small city. Uh, for them, partnership with the business like us is a way to find awareness among the population and gain the trust from our customers through loyalty to our brand. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, this is a good way uh, to get. Um, uh, awareness uh, instead of uh, tremendous efforts which they can do by their by by themselves that is why for uh, such non-profit organizations it's a very uh, significant to make partnerships with business uh, another question uh, uh, what is the goal of uh, this partnership for business uh, the correct uh, cooperation uh, for them is understandable. For us, uh, uh, it is important because we uh, immersed in problem uh, more than we can do it by ourselves. Uh, it, it means that we can do, we can solve problems more systematically uh, using their expertise and their knowledge. That's why for us, this cooperation is also very significant. Uh, and in this case, uh, it is very important uh, to mention that uh, we also can make a, a sustainable GI relationship uh, via such projects, because uh, if we're talking about a great social impact or great social changes, uh, non-profit organization uh, have to work with uh, government, with authorities in their countries, in their cities, sorry, in their cities. So uh, for us, we can influence uh, the, uh, the decisions uh, on decisions through non-profit organizations. This is our main goal. And uh, uh, the last way, um, which I can tell you about is uh, even it is connected with even more serious level of implementation of uh, CSR tasks. It is about corporate foundation. Uh, why it is uh, why it is important, and why uh, it is uh, uh, why I'm talking about more serious level, because a fund uh, opens a wide range of opportunities for organization structure. Uh, such as uh, a CSR implementation, uh, mainly because uh, there is a chance to, uh, to avoid all problems with compliance. For example, a company can't attract uh, partners uh, and suppliers, uh, uh, can't, can't attract their money, for example, can't attract them to work together on the projects because it will be strange if our supplier 
works with us on social project. Uh, also, uh, such uh, foundation provides huge financial opportunities for implementation of uh, financial projects. Uh, for example, all social projects are financed uh, exclusively uh, by the resources of the company. Uh, if we're talking in the uh, case one or two, uh, in the first, uh, in this last case, it is possible to attract resources from other nonprofit companies or from other commercial companies. Uh, for example, there is a foundation, uh, Amway Foundation. Uh, they implement their CSR strategy uh, as a corporate foundation. Uh, and they fund, their fund takes grants from uh, Rusal Corporate Fund. Uh, and uh, Rusal itself uh, makes social programs uh, that are co financed by other companies. So it's like mix of uh, business uh, uh, of business financing. Uh, the fourth thing uh, uh, which I told, which I want to tell you, is about uh, uh, is about um, um, I think um, uh, it is important to understand that a corporate foundation is also a non-profit organization. Uh, it, it is uh, founded by a business, but it is non-profit organization, and this non-profit organization can uh, uh, take part in. Uh, uh, grant competition from the government. So it means that they can uh, get uh, uh, government money to realize their social projects. For example, if we take cases uh, first and second, it is impossible to imagine that commercial company uh, takes grant from uh, our government. Uh, and the last one, Another important feature is the ability to help individuals directly. Uh, if there is no government agencies or non-profit organization that provides any specific assistance, corporate fund is the only way to implement a, a corporate social responsibility strategy. I think that's all on this slide and maybe some examples um, to conclude. Um, let me find, let me start with from this slide. Today we're holding the first charity event in the history of our company, uh, to which I invite you with pleasure. Uh, so it's quite simple. You buy any product in our store, throw it into the box behind the check, uh, checkout line. Uh, and then our company will report one more uh, product to each pur uh, purchased by the client product and deliver to the families. Uh, the beneficiaries of this action are families who find themselves in difficult life situation. Uh, for example, imagine a family with a, a total income about uh, 40,000 rubles. And for example, this family uh, has two children. They live in a small settlement, 300 kilometers away from the city. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, imagine that, uh, for example, uh, their house uh, burns down and they don't really have any money uh, to uh, build another one house or uh, imagine the family where the head of the family remains unemployed due to, uh, due to, for example, closing the only enterprise in their village. And in our country, nobody helps such people. And that's why we decided to launch this action. Uh, all these uh, goods will go directly to such families, uh, which are not um, uh, beneficiaries of any other uh, charity programs of non-profit organizations or government programs. So I just invite you to take part. Uh, and another reason why I'm, I'm telling you about this, uh, uh, about this charity program, uh, because uh, we uh, do need together with, I don't know how it's in English, uh, 
in every region, we partnership with them uh, and they appoint us to these families. Uh, so it's like a very good example of cooperation with authorities, I think, to my mind. Uh, another uh, another um, example which I want to tell you is about Nacheshka. Uh, for us, uh, this topic is especially significant because it is about people who uh, who don't have any home at all, and uh, most often homeless is not a person choice. It's like obstacles. Uh, that's why for us this topic is uh, highly important and we begin to cooperate with uh, Nacheshka uh, last year. We started with helping there with their uh, uh, projects in St. Petersburg um, and then uh, uh, we uh, helped them to uh, launch their uh, projects in Moscow. Uh, we help them to build this consulting uh, uh, center and uh, first shelter for homeless people in Moscow. Um, mainly, which I want, or mainly, or, ah, by the way, one project more with them. Uh, we employ people uh, who undergone rehabilitation in their, uh, in their uh, consulting center. And uh, now we are really conducting interviews uh, with such people in St. Petersburg and going to do it in Moscow. So it's like a good uh, example of not only helping by uh, charity, but it is also a good example about uh, uh, helping people to find their job and to feel more safety. Uh, it's about rehabilitation uh, in social world. So, uh, on this slide, there is uh, uh, there is information about how much uh, money uh, and other and other assets were um, uh, were donated by the companies. So uh, Nacheshka is a very good example that uh, it is the only uh, project in our country uh, which uh, solves the problem of homeless at systematic level. And their uh, professionalism has reached such a, uh, such a, uh, a big level that every year the director of Nacheshka have a meeting with our president and they discuss uh, uh, homeless uh, problems. I'm not sure that their discussion is successful because nothing is still done, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, it's a good example. Uh, when uh, uh, organization and profit organization is supported uh, by uh, companies and uh, their level of management is so high that they uh, managed to solve all these social problems with homeless at systematic level, uh, particularly in St. Petersburg and Moscow, but nevertheless. Uh, and uh, the main way they can do it because of the help of uh, business. So it's it's a good example. Uh, I think that's all for today uh, about my presentation. Maybe we can uh, talk a little bit. Maybe uh, we can start our discussion from your experience. Uh, if somebody has a volunteering experience, please tell us about this. Yeah, I think that would be a great start of the conversation by sharing stories. I think that's always the best approach. And thank you so much, Asya, for going so deep into um, all of the great work that you're doing, substituting the state in many fields, building relations with NGOs and nonprofits in Russia, which is extremely difficult. And you just gave so many cases which show um, how really CSR is done. And that's beyond charity, even though there are a lot of uh, charitable projects that you do but still the connection and engagement with stakeholders is great and with almost no support from the government this is what can we do <laughs> yes this is the part of the russian reality and i think many companies are in the in the same shoes as you are and uh, Unfortunately, social partnership is not the best thing that has developed, but that for that, it takes time. In, in it eight, takes time, really. It yeah. takes time. Yeah. So guys, please, the floor is yours. Now we have um, time to talk about your experience. Tell 
please a little bit Asya or we can go to your questions because one of the questions I see in the chat from Alexander who is with his camera on maybe you can start by sharing your experience I'm okay uh, so I had experience of volunteering but uh, it's more about um, profitation of school children in Russian Shkolnikov uh, and uh, university applicants uh, about how to choose your favorite program. Maybe it's uh, all of my volunteering experience. And why uh, uh, did you uh, decide to, to volunteer in such projects? Um, it's a good question. It may be my preference my main trajectory of professional life. Uh, so I like to uh, consult other people to make a, a, a right choice of uh, their uh, self-development, self-realization in life. <laughs> and and it in uh, consulting, it's a good reason really to do it. Thank you very much. Uh, and maybe somebody has uh, uh, any experience in charity uh, I have uh, in my company. I'm currently working in uh, EY, and uh, at the uh, uh, during the New Year holidays, our company uh, uh, asks employees to uh, give some money for buying presents for children who are sick, who have uh, serious diseases, uh, so that they and their families are not wealthy so that uh, children can also have uh, uh, a good holiday and to enjoy uh, these new year days with the presents they really want i also wanted to tell you about the, one of their organization i'm sorry Vladislava. would you mind turning on your camera uh, I'm really sorry, I'm sick <laughs> uh, also. That's why I, I do not want uh, to show myself if possible. Okay, well, okay. you're excused if you're sick. <laughs> Vladislava, and one, one question, please. Um, and what is your approach to such, uh, uh, well, uh, to such charity project from the company? Do you like it? Do you appreciate it? Or or you just have to do it because everybody uh, does it? Okay, I, I can say that I like it, but uh, actually during your speech, I was thinking about my previous employer, uh, which was BCG, because this company uh, done a lot more than uh, my current employer. And uh, I also thought about the um, To Do Good platform, maybe you know about it. It was founded by one of the BCG uh, directors. And this is, uh, I will tell other, actually I did not have a chance to, uh, ta to take part in it, but uh, I think that this is a really great initiative. And I know about the projects they, that they realized and it was really great. Uh, this is the platform for uh, 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 volunteers who, who can spend some of their uh, free time for uh, helping other organizations on the basis of pro bono about which you, you were telling us. They can, uh, for example, have, help some non-commercial organizations to develop a strategy or to, uh, to prepare some financial uh, uh, documents and so on. And it's not uh, limited. The help which can be provided is not limited by something. And there are quite many people and uh, uh, their stories are presented at the site of this uh, platform. And it's really inspiring. That's why I like the BCG approach much more than EY approach, because in this company, it was uh, more spread among, among the employees. All of the employees uh, tried to contribute somehow to the sustainability. They took part in uh, different charity events. The office was uh, organized uh, correctly and so on. Vladislava, do you uh, do I understand correctly? So it means that uh, your loyalty to the second company uh, is uh, higher because of their social responsible strategy. 
Yes, it's true, because I still feel uh, that I'm a former BCG uh, employee. Uh, however, I work in the current company uh, for more time, but still I always remember this experience and I understand that I am more loyal to that company than to my current employer. Uh, can I just but add a, a, a moment here? Because Anton Stepanenko was just like you are, our guest um, two years ago, who, who, and he presented the To Do Good project uh, as part of my class. And he is also a graduate from high school of economics from the law department. So you right. see how, how small the world <laughs> is. And we all are kind of meeting in the, in the same place. And what he's doing, I think it's also part of his drive to do something more, just besides doing consulting where he's great at, but it shows that the um, initiative coming from people and uh, doing something that's also important, the personal factor. I, I would um, ask you maybe to comment a little bit on that. What, what's your experience being inside of Leroy Melin? Who drives the, the process of CSR and sustainability? How is that in your company? Well, mainly I want to say that we're friends with BCG Mm -hmm. uh, I really like this company. They they really have a good approach. Uh, about uh, our company, uh, as I already told you, uh, all the initiatives of our social projects come from our employees. And it is very important approach to implement a CSR strategy. Uh, and we don't want to change it. Oh. Uh, even though there is me who is responsible for all projects in the country, but the main thing which uh, which I do, I uh, uh, every every week I have one day uh, when I have meetings with all uh, uh, employees who want to launch project. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that my role is to uh, is to uh, make their projects more professional. Uh, to uh, I help them to do budgeting. I help them uh, to uh, manage uh, social uh, changes. I help them to make partnerships better. I help them to make all this uh, uh, to make um, to find uh, resources to make uh, a media. Uh, but all these initiatives running the project is the responsibility of the person who started uh, the project. So this is our approach. Cool. Wonderful. So anyone else, guys, questions? Or Isa, would you like to ask your questions to the guys? Yes, I, I just want to maybe to listen to someone else about uh, experience in volunteering and or charity pro, uh, charity projects. Maybe uh, you know somebody who did it once or uh, do it systematically, and you can share. Maybe it's your family or friends, or someone who inspires you. Well. Maybe I can share, um, although I was taught that if you do something good, you should not be proud of yourself or something like this. But um, almost each month, I, let's say, donate money or uh, food to the organization, which is called um, Dari Yidu. Um, it's just created for people who are in hard um, life situations and who have uh, nothing to eat. It's just, I don't know, for instance, um, retired people or um, lonely parents, like uh, the only mother, only father, uh, or those who lost their houses or homes. So yeah, that's my personal contribution. Thank you, Kenya. And I'll just add one comment here, Asia. maybe you can agree with me or disagree, because for me, it's also about charity um, and the cultural code in Russia, because personally, we all know that it's not real. If you do something uh, out of uh, good reasons, uh, you don't talk about it. But when we come to uh, charity, uh, the corporate charity, then the story is different is difficult, is different, right? Because there are so many social problems in the country. And what you were talking about that uh, media doesn't want to publish uh, the stories of business substituting government. I hear it uh, like la last 15 years as I'm following CSR agenda in Russia, that's always the same. What, what's your personal uh, opinion on that? I would really like to hear that. Uh, my personal opinion 
opinion is uh, it is important not to be humble uh, if you uh, if you do not talk about uh, your uh, uh, if you do not talk about your own uh, approach if you do not talk about your help uh, there will be not enough attention to the problem you're trying to solve and this problem will never be solved uh, so helping means not only giving money giving your experience or given other sets if we're talking about uh, companies uh, helping is also about uh, talking loudly about the problem for example we talked about Nacheshka. a uh, homeless problem is not really popular Nobody wants to talk about this. Uh, nobody wants to. If you, uh, if the company helps, uh, for example, children, you can see a lot of uh, TV shows. Uh, you can see advertisements. You can see uh, maybe presentations how good the company is about helping the uh, uh, helping uh, children from orphanages, and it is very appreciated by uh, our uh, society in Russia. But nobody talks about, for example, homeless uh, people. And it is not a popular topic. And that is why if even company help to Nacheshka, helps to Nacheshka, company asks uh, organization not to talk about this. So uh, if, um, to, uh, if we talk about approach of Leora Merlin, we think that the main thing we can do is to talk loudly about the problem which we try to solve. And only this way, uh, the most right uh, right way to to uh, to o overcome all the obstacles and solve the problem. Yeah. So to be transparent in what you're doing and clearly communicate the problem and yes, exactly. trying to engage all of the major stakeholders here, because you have way more competences than many of the non-government organizations that you're working with but you know i re recently um i was watching the effie um ceremony where they were um giving awards to the best brands um that are um, also helping to achieve sdgs in russia and one of the speakers there she represented the latest research on the level of trust to different societal actors in russia i was really surprised it was a representative study on russia that the level of trust to non-profit organization has risen and it's now number four in terms of trust in terms of the societal actor in russia so we can actually be proud of all the work that this sector and with the support from the business was doing this past many many years because i think what you just told us the story of big trust that um, local people have to big brands like Lero and Merlin. but at the same time it's good to know that there is a lot of trust in the society to non-profits because this is the way when we have the stronger civil society when we can actually help uh, solving the problems which the government is not solving well, uh, according to my experience, there is not enough trust to, to non-profit organization. Of course, everybody knows Fond Vera, Padre Zizn, Nachlierka, and all others. But maybe we can count 20 organizations. If, if we ask somebody, uh, even here in this group, what kind of non-profit organization do you know whom you trust? Uh, I think there will be not more 20, not more. Uh, and all of them will be, uh, I think, located in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Novosibirsk, maybe Katerinburg, maybe Kazan, that's all. But if we're talking about uh, small towns, for example, Magnitogorsk, it's uh, near Chelyabinsk, 20 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there is a non-profit organization, even three, uh, uh, which we can help, which we can assist us. But nobody knows about this, but they do a really great, um, really great uh, job and they don't have any resources to promote their programs. Mm -hmm. So and the way how we do it um, in five minutes in our social network and then uh, just to put something on a, in our store uh, uh, better uh, than they um, tried to uh, pay attention to their programs in two years. So that's the reason uh, and yeah, resources uh, and they don't that's probably another <laughs> a great job the great job which uh, does uh, uh, fund with the bank uh, 
uh, 15 years ago, uh, they managed to to, um, to conduct a program where a person can uh, just allow a Sberbank to uh, uh, to send uh, one, two, three, four, five rubles. It's like very small amount to the fund when you buy something. Uh, and uh, uh, but the regime was very small fund, but Sberbank was like a big bank. Of course, everybody knows about Sberbank, and so uh, that helps them to uh, uh, to build a hospital in Moscow, which is called uh, uh, Hospital of Dima Rogachova. So that's a good example how a big company can help a small fund to become aware uh, to, to make uh, to make people be aware about their programs, not even awareness of the fund. You know, uh, I, I'm talking about awareness of the special program. Well, great. <laughs> Do you have any more questions to the audience or audience to you? I'm trying to engage uh, very passive students so far. Guys, uh, this is an incredible opportunity to have real life um, experience with, uh, with the professional of um, such quality that you don't meet every day. So you well, can can yeah, go ahead. Uh, I wrote in the chat that uh, I haven't such experience as a volunteer, but whenever it's possible, I send some amount of money through a special uh, website of uh, Sberbank, actually, um, to various uh, initiatives initiatives so uh i saved, saved several animals in the far east for example mm -hmm. uh, also i think it's very important to support children with a um, smart di diagnosis uh, um, so um uh, they need uh, a very expensive um injection one injection it cost more than two um, billion two million dollars and when i see such a problem i cannot pass by and i send uh, to them uh, some amount of money sounds great thank you for example maybe somebody else want to share with some with us uh yes i would i would like to share uh I also participate in um in a campaign of charity but it was uh, a sudden decision um, I was subscribed to Instagram in the organization that called um, Black Jagu Jaguar and White Tiger. Maybe someone heard. Um, it's an organization in Mexico when they help uh, small uh, jaguars and tigers and other animals. And they made a campaign uh, in Instagram and I decided to participate and I really felt good. So I think um, I will continue this in my future. Um, I really think it's important. Sounds real great. So you think that uh, you can help uh, animals and find a very interesting project and good partner. Sounds great. Thank you. Maybe somebody else. Oh, we have some comments in the chat. So some guys are helping animal shelters. Animal shelters. Uh, maybe these guys can uh, help us with the way of for their assistance. Uh, do they help uh, by charity, or maybe it's like uh, pro bono, or maybe it's uh, volunteering, working with uh, animals, with dogs, helping cats, helping to uh, play with them. It's very important to role also to play with with animals. Uh, mainly it's uh, financial help, but uh, earlier when I was studying in bachelor uh, degree, I also went there to work with them, help uh, the employees uh, to check the cages and so on. And I see Sofia Shepleva, also your comment that you help uh, WWF. So that's our big, big player. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us. It's charity, not volunteering. Okay, maybe you can tell the story of your engagement there. Or anyone else? We just have four more minutes before the official end of our session today. I said the time is running 
so fast uh, but yeah wwf is a great is a great our partner mm -hmm. uh, and also it's one of the well-known uh non-profit organizations all over the world and moreover it was I think one of the first non-profit organizations um, uh, which came to Russian Federation in the beginning of existing of our country. Yeah, and they have great reputation uh, long run. Yeah, we can name a few like Greenpeace and so on with them. ties to environment more precisely. Okay, so any more questions? Your last opportunity or to share your story. <laughs> can you hear me? I can yes, yeah. tell a little bit uh, about uh, WWF. Uh, I uh, was uh, a financial sponsor <laughs> of this fund at uh, first uh, courses uh, in my uh, St. Petersburg student life. And uh, uh, I great. Uh, I have a great connection with uh, this fund. Uh, they uh, uh, called me, and uh, we um, have a information volunteer. I can tell this. And uh, what's uh, the prettiest thing I have? It's uh, toys of uh, white leopard and bison, uh, mm -hmm. which. Uh, WWF uh, sent me as a present for my help to them. Sounds great. Yeah, and we have some more responses in the chat that Dobre Krishishki is the most beloved yeah, <laughs> project. Why not? There is a good, oh, by the way, volunteer action which is called the Karopka Hrabrosti. Mm -hmm. You can buy a, um, a small present, uh, a toy, for example, and put it in the box. And then a child, after a uh, difficult, uh, uh, maybe in, in hospitals, after a difficult uh, illness, can just get these toys and be happy <laughs> that uh, he overcome uh, all these procedures which face in hospital. So it's also very simple, but plays a big role for, for small children. <laughs> 